Hello, we are going to be looking at how to find the slope of a secant line and a tangent line. Uh, these are two really important things to do in um, calculus. In fact, there are three really important things we do in calculus. One is to find limits, two, to find derivatives, and three is going to be integration. So this is actually going to transition us from limits into derivatives. So we're going to start with sort of an exploration that you have available to you. So I have a parabola here, and I have two lines that go through the parabola. The blue line you see here, that's going to be called the secant line. And notice that it crosses that parabola in two distinct points. The purple line is called the tangent line, and that tangent line crosses it, at, in fact, it touches the graph of the parabola at only one point right there. So we're going to f try to find the slope of the point at this line, and that's actually going to be our derivative, a really big um, thing that we use in calculus. So we're going to develop this tangent line, this purple tangent line, by looking at the secant line and using limits. So we have to recall the formula for a slope. So if you look up here, to find the slope of a line, um, what we do is we use the formula um, slope is equal to rise over run. So what we're gonna be looking at for this blue line here is essentially this change in y, the change in y of the rise over the run, the change in x. So if we label these two points x, so if this is x, this is just some distance x, Notice our height is going to be the function at that point x. So this is the point x, f of x. And then we add on a distance h. So this is going to be x plus h here. That's our first coordinate. And then f of x plus h up here. We're going to find the slope between these two points. So that's what I've done over here. If our function, let's just say it's x squared minus x plus one, you see that it's a parabola. It might not be exactly that graph, but we'll just use this as our formula. We notice that our function is a change, or our slope is a change in y over the change of x, or the difference in the y coordinates over the difference in the x coordinates. And when we use that um, change in y, that we can use that function notation. So we have these two points though. We have x and f of x and x plus h and f of x plus h. So let's plug that into our formula over here. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to compute that f of x plus h. And so we know how to compute um, the function at a point. So this x plus h here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back up into this function here and wherever I see an x, I'm gonna plug in an x plus h. So I'll get x plus h squared, and I'll get minus x plus h over here, and then I'll get the plus one. If I multiply this out by foiling, so x plus h times x plus h, I get x squared plus two xh plus h squared for that first term here. And the second one, if I distribute the minus through, I get minus x, minus h, and then I just get plus one. So this is sort of the simplified form of just the function. So I'm going to take this, right here, the simplified form, and I'm gonna plug it in to our function. So that's going to be this part here, as you'll see in a minute. So our function becomes, I sort of move this down. F of X plus H minus F of X. And then I plug that in. Get rid of that. And I get this f of x plus h, that's gonna be right here. So this should essentially be x plus h.
minus our f of x over x plus h minus x. Because you see that these are the points we use from over here, right? Those are these points. So I'll plug that in there and I'll subtract. And when I multiply this out and distribute this minus through, I get terms that are gonna cancel out. So the x squared subtract out, and this will always happen. Um, the minus x, it cancels out, it subtracts out with the plus x. The plus one and the minus one subtract out. So I'm really just left with a few terms left. And notice even on the bottom, the x minus x, they subtract out. So I'm really only left with that one term on the bottom. And I get the formula for my secant line is 2x plus h plus h squared minus h over h. So notice that this really does um, depend on both x and h. So if we go over to our exploration, I can sort of change the x, so the starting point, I can change it over there if I want it to be 2.5 or 2 or 1.25, and my h, I can make that h the distance between the two bigger, or I can make it smaller. So I can sort of see um, what that secant line is. So you can see that if I had the secant line here, that blue line here, um, I would have a certain slope. But if I moved it out further, that slope is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. That slope, that steepness of the curve is going to rise. So our ultimate goal, remember, was to get a tangent line. So that's that purple line here. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take the slope of that secant line, that blue secant line, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna let our h get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And our slope is getting smaller until it's zero. So we're gonna let our h go to zero, and that's gonna just give us that slope of the tangent line. So the way we do that is what you've learned is when we let something get smaller and smaller and smaller or go to some number, we use a limit. So to find this tangent line, it's gonna be the point where the line touches the curve at the one point over here. And as I told you, it's gonna to relate to the derivative of the curve at that point. So the tangent line is a slope at only one point, so we're gonna let that distance between the points get so small that they're essentially that one point. So that's letting h go to zero. So to do that, we take a limit. So the slope of my tangent line is the limit as h goes to zero of that function, f of x plus h minus f of x. So this was just what we did up here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take what we had up here for our tangent line, for our sorry, secant line, and we're going to put that right here because they're the same thing. So the only thing we're going to do differently is we're going to um, let that limit go to zero. And that's the only difference between the secant line and the tangent line. So if I were to plug that in, I would get this. But notice what would happen if I plugged it in here. So this is worth noting. When I take a limit, if I plug in h here, I get a zero over zero. And that is not a zero, it's not infinity. Um, it's going to be what we call an indeterminate form. So what that means I need to do is I need to simplify some things. So you can sort of see what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna simplify things by factoring out that common H in the um, numerator of, of our formula here. And that's usually what happens. So if when I factor that out, it will cancel out with the denominator H and I'll come up with a formula, the formula that looks like this. So now what I wanna do the last step and sometimes the students get a little bit tripped up on this, so don't let this be you, is they try to simplify this or solve this for something. 
really what we're doing is just taking a limit. So we're gonna have a formula in terms of x. So I'm gonna let that h be zero, and that's gonna give us our derivative or the slope of our curve at that point. So if I plug in zero for h, I get this 2x plus minus one, and that is going to give me the formula for our tangent line. So it really just depends on what x is, and that's gonna give us our slope. So if you look over here, let's say that I let my x be one, then my derivative over here, if I plug in one for x, would be two times one minus one, it would be a slope of one. But let's say that I let my point be two. Get there maybe. Close. Or let's just say 1.9. Then I've got 2 times 1.9, which is 3.8 minus 1. So that would be 2.8. And you can see the slope is bigger. You know, if I have something negative, like let's say negative 1. There we go. I can plug in negative 1 for x, and then my slope is two times negative one, that's negative two minus one, that's a negative three slope, just for the right curve. And then we can go and take numerous values for that x. So what we found over here is actually going to be the derivative or the slope of that tangent line at any point on the graph um, at any time. One point that we're gonna see that's really important to us later is zero. So if I plugged in um, zero, for x, if this was the right curve, we would get a slope of zero. And notice that the slope does have zero. It's, there's no rise and no run. It turns out that those points are going to be possibilities where the curve is a minimum or a maximum. In this case, it's a minimum. But we'll discuss all that later. So I wanted to give you an example of how you could get a derivative by using the tangent line. So I hope this has helped. Thank you.